Greetings brothers and sisters. Welcome to another afternoon Bible study where we discuss uh, present truth and uh, today as usual I'm joined by two gentlemen. On my left which is your right we have Elder Mumba. Welcome Elder Mumba. On my right which is uh, your left we have brother Nathan and uh, we have a beautiful audience out there. Uh, gentlemen, before we go into today's study, let us uh, seek the presence of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Angels. Who's going to pray for us today? Lord Amor. Shall we pray? Our dear Heavenly Father, Master, we thank you for this wonderful hour of the Sabbath. We worship you, Almighty, and we honor you for this time. We pray, Lord, for the Holy Spirit to guide us and to be with us through this program. O oh Lord, we pray that may you forgive us our sins and cleanse us, Lord. Lead us, Lord, not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. Let this word, Lord, which are going to teach and to learn from it, be acceptable unto you in the mighty name of Jesus. Bless the viewers and the listeners. Let them find peace. Let them find time to watch and learn from this, because in this they are going to learn internal life. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray with thanksgiving in our hearts. Amen. Okay. Thank you, Elder Mumba. Thank you. Uh, we we carry it on. We were dealing with uh, the sec uh, is it the third the third segment of present truth, and it's uh, remember the first was the ten commandments, then we came to the sanctuary, then we are now dealing with the faith of Jesus Christ, and we'll finish up with the two thousand three hundred years. That is what present truth is made up of. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, let us uh, carry on Elder Mumba from where we left it last week. Uh, today to start the, the program rolling, gentlemen, I want us to go to the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter uh, 39, verse 9. Who is there? But as Chapter 39, verse 9. But as you go to that verse, I want to give you a citation from the spirit of prophecy. You see, the story of Joseph... The story of Joseph is a story that talks about serious faith. Ah. Joseph is a gentleman who is very special. And that is the gentleman I want to see when I reach heaven. Joseph. Joseph closes the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis spans a period of more than 1,000 years, close to 2,000 years. The book of Genesis starts perfectly. Errors come in. And then ends perfectly with Joseph. Joseph is a special person. Spirit of prophecy talks about Joseph a lot. Now, what is, how do we relate faith of Joseph, of, which he had in Jesus, and the faith we're talking about today? Uh, Joseph was in, in a very, very tricky situation, Brad Nathan. Joseph was in a situation where the wife, is it Potiphar? Potiphar's wife wanted to sleep with him. Joseph resisted that temptation. What Spirit of Prophecy says, what helped Joseph to resist that temptation of sleeping with that beautiful and seductive wife of Potiphar was not because of anything else but faith. But faith. So, uh, before I, I quote from the Spirit of Prophecy, I want you to read, uh, anybody in the audience who has found it, I want the audience to participate also, uh, Genesis chapter 38, 39 verse 9. There is none greater in this house than I, mm -hmm. neither have he kept back anything from me but thee, mm -hmm. because thou art his wife. Hmm. How then can I do this great wickedness? and sin against God. Hmm. So, that was the response of Joseph, is it? So, it was basically sinning against who? The husband? No. It wasn't about the husband of Mrs. Potiphar. It was about fearing God. So, we are relating faith 
to the fear of the Lord in keeping the, te- the precepts of God. There is no way we can relate faith of Jesus without keeping the Ten Commandments of God. Joseph said so. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Those who love me will keep my commandments. So many verses in the Bible. Now, I'm going to quote this citation from Spirit of Prophecy from a book called Education 255.3. The prophet says, This thought was Joseph's shield amidst the corruptions of Egypt. To the allurements of the temptation, his answer was steadfast. How can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So the prophet, when you read that chapter, she's emphasizing on the fact that Joseph had the faith of Jesus Christ, the faith of fearing the Lord. That is why he was able to resist the temptation and the allurements, as she's saying it, of sin. So, though we are surrounded in an environment full of sin, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, we are able, because of our faith, the faith of Jesus Christ, we are able to resist the temptations because we know that the faith of Jesus Christ includes the fear of the Lord, which is keeping his Ten Commandments. Who wants to take up the mic? Thank you so much, my evangelist, I can say, because yes, yes. Uh, you have seen, or you have heard what our evangelist has highlighted. Yes, that is true. That is the faith which Joseph had. And that one, we need to apply to ourselves. Yes. So, again, I just want to highlight the movement of Jesus Christ in the sanctuary. Because David said, Thy way, O Lord, is in the sanctuary. So sanctuary, brothers and sisters, are very, very important. Very, very important. Jesus Christ, on the beginning, he was in heaven with his God the Father. Yes. So he left heaven to become man from all all of holies into the holy place. He he became a man. Christ lived perfect life on earth. Yes. In the holy place. In the courtyard, Jesus baptized at the 30 years old. And three and a half years, Christ died on the cross for our sins. Yes. So, from the cross there, He now helps us in the same life he experienced to to prepare us for heaven. We met him at the cross to begin our relationship as we confess our sins, accept him as savior. Yes. We, We are baptized just as he was baptized, symbolizing death to old life new to Christ. Yes. So now we are from all of holies to the holy place to the courtyard. Okay. So now here it says in the courtyard, what Christ did for us represents cross and baptism, justification, which is freedom from the penalty of sin. So from the cross up to the lever there in that section in the courtyard. Yeah, that's what Jesus Christ did. That is justification. Yes. What place, what Christ does in us represent Christian life, sanctification, which is freedom from the power of sin. That is sanctification. In the most holy, where Christ will take us into God's presence, heaven, glorification, which is freedom from the presence of sin. Because sin cannot be in the presence of God. So that is the movement of Jesus Christ in the sanctuary. Yes. So we are are still asking a question. What is the faith of Jesus? Yes. So now here we are going to go to the Bible now. We are going to read two verses. Yes.
Yes, we are going to, to read Galatians 2 verse 16 and Romans 3 verse 22. Yes. So, anyone who have found it to help us reading quickly, quickly. Okay, let me read it. Yes, because we are running off time. Galatians 2 verse 16 says, Knowing that a man is not justified by the works of the law, but by the faith of Christ Jesus. Okay. So here, before I finish the verse, let's just stand here. There. Justification is the faith of Jesus Christ. Let's go to Romans. Romans quickly, quickly. Romans 3, verse 22. Yes. Even the righteousness of God, which is by faith of Jesus Christ, unto all and upon all them that believe. For there is no difference. Yes. Thank you so much. So we see that righteousness and justification are one and the same thing. When you talk about justification, we are talking about righteousness. So these are the, just the same thing we are talking about. So now, again, we are going to ask the question, what is the faith of Jesus according to the spirit of prophecy? Yes. There is a book in the spirit of prophecy called The Faith I Live By, written by Ellen White, the prophet. It says, the grace of Christ is freely to justify the sinner without merit or claim on his part. Justification is the full complete pardon of sin. The moment a sinner accepts Christ by faith, that moment he is pardoned. The righteousness of Christ is imputed to him and he is no more doubt God is forgiven grace. Yes. So you see now you have defined the justification which is the faith of Jesus. So the faith of Jesus is the pardon of sin. Someone, a sinner has been pardoned completely. When you are pardoned completely which means you are pardoned completely. You have been pardoned. So this one was taking place when you Draw the sanctuary just from the cross up to the lever at the courtyard. We are defining what is the faith of Jesus Christ. Yes. We are going to continue again asking the question about the faith of Jesus Christ. But now we are, the spirit of prophecy has helped us, Ellen White. We are defining what is justification which is the spirit of prophecy, yes, which is the faith of Jesus Christ, yes. Any clarification? Thank you, Elder. thank you. Very, very valid points from the elder there. There is no justification elder without faith, is it? Yes, yes, very valid, very valid. And he has explained the movements all the way from the courtyard to the holy place to the most holy place. Faith is playing a big role throughout. Thank you. I think uh, the elders have opened the discussion at a good pace. Faith of Jesus Christ. By faith, French Revolution, 70,000 women, men, young kids died for Jesus Christ. Butchered like chickens by faith. By faith, Abel gave a good offering to God than Cain. By faith, Enoch walked with God and he was translated. By faith, Father Abraham came out from his seat and went to a land no, that God promised him. He, couldn't, he never knew where he went. By faith, Noah 
built an ark for 1,200 years, 120, without doubting God, faith of Jesus Christ. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 6 it says, But without faith it is impossible to please him, for he that for he that cometh to God must believe that he is God, and that he is a rewarder of them that di di diligently seek him. By faith, God will give us those results. You know, in this journey, sense of living God, faith of Jesus Christ is one which will make us stand. But it all starts first. You have to believe in Jesus Christ because here, according to the verse we have read, anyone that believes, God will reward him diligently according to his works. Let us seek him daily and have faith in him. You heard our elder, elder Mumba opened in the point of the sanctuary. The sanctuary, God played the law of justification which covering our sins then is finishing the work of sanctification in the most holy place. So why is he sealing his children in the most holy place? Let us cultivate faith because the pioneers who, re who reigned before us, they implemented faith. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Brother Nathan. Uh, uh, th there is something that I want to bring uh, on board, the inverse relationship between faith and fear. Faith and fear. Let's go to Psalms. As I'm explaining, the book of Psalms, I love David. David was God's, uh, God's son. Psalms chapter 34, verse 7. The fear. So if you get it, someone in the audience, please uh, read it out. Uh, and then uh, you can also go to Acts chapter 27. I want to just deal with these two. Psalms 34, verse 7, and the book of Acts, chapter 27. Yeah, keep your fingers on those two as I'm explaining. Now, when you go to Acts, chapter 27, verse 22, we are talking about Paul. Paul was on a voyage, a long journey across the seas. So Paul goes into a ship, and he has a lot of people on board. Okay, there were 276 people on board, soldiers, and those were not even uh, Christians, those were Romans. Paul is on the way to meet Caesar, and then a very, very strong wind, very destructive wind came through. Actually, the name of the wind was called the Euroclidon. You read it in that chapter. It was a very strong wind, and they started getting scared to say we are going to die. We're talking about faith inversely related to fear. We're going to die, we're going to die. And Paul was amongst them on a mission sent by God, by Jesus, to go and do his job, to meet Caesar and rebuke. Our job is to rebuke the sins. And then the angel of the Lord appeared to Paul, the servant of God. And told him, Paul, you're not going to die. You're not going to die. And even the people on this ship will not die. Paul came and told these people, you're not going to die. Paul had faith. Let us go to Acts. Is there anybody who's in the book of Acts chapter 20? I'll just read, we'll just read, we'll not, I'll just summarize the whole story. You're going to read it on your own time, but we're just going to read two or three verses there. Acts chapter 27 verse 22. Acts chapter 27, the faith Paul had on that terrible two weeks journey. Two weeks journey. As you are getting that verse, at the end of the two weeks journey, my dear brothers and sisters, God saved these people. God, exactly what the angel told Paul would happen, happened when it was supposed to happen. Exactly. The angel said, none of these men will die, but the ship <laughs> The ship will be damaged, totally damaged. Two weeks later, the ship was damaged, but none of the men died. 276 
people who were not Christians were saved because of a servant of God who received a message from above to say none of them will die. Okay, let's read Acts 27 verse 22. In the audience there. 27 verse 2. Mm -hmm. And entering into a ship of Adramite. Verse 22. Adramitium. Verse 22. Verse 22? Yes, you read from verse 22. We just want the faith. From verse 22 to 24. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no less, no loss of any man's life among you. That's the angel now. Mm -hmm. But of the sheep. The sheep will damage. Mm -hmm. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, okay. whose I am and whom I serve. Hmm. Say, fear not, Paul, thou must be brought fear not. before Caesar, mm -hmm. and lo, God hath given thee all them that mm -hmm. sell thee. All of them, the 276 of them. Uh, I want you to, that's 24, right? Yes. I summarized the story, so we're just picking the key verses, Elder Mumba. Go to verse 34, just one verse. Wherefore, I pray you to take some meat. Mm -hmm. For this is for your health, mm -hmm. for there shall not a hair fall from the head mm. of any of you. Mm. Now, that is after two weeks of being scared. You know, the oceans, gentlemen, <laughs> if there's anything that can scare you to death is the oceans when they get annoyed. Two weeks later, those men all survived and an instruction was given by Paul that I need to feed the angel said, feed these men. They've starved for two weeks. He gave them something to eat. He actually broke the bread, prayed for it, and they ate. Go, read verse 44, just the last verse there. And the rest, some on boards, and some on broken pieces of the sheep. Broken pieces of the sheep, yes. And so it came to pass mm -hmm. that they escaped all safe to land. All of them. How many were they? Oh, okay. It's written down the three score, this, this, but it basically it was 270, what? Six. So, faith is inversely related to fear. Is it last week when we talked of Peter? The gentleman who walked on water? Then when fear came in, what happened? He sank. It was faith. So, this element of fear and faith can never be positively correlated with Mumba. That is why the journey that we are in, the people who are in here, behind there in the audience and us here, the whole team, the team that is being built globally is a team that will not contain cowards. It's a team that will not... Co what are we going to do when they come cutting off our, our body parts to force us to accept the National Sunday Law? Will we continue having fear? So, we have to have the faith of Jesus Christ. The faith in Jesus Christ. Because that faith ensures that the fear element is completely eradicated away. Away. So we are talking about faith. We saw the faith of Paul. Uh, can someone read uh, Psalm 34 verse 7? I love that verse. I can't just pass it by before I pass the mic to my fellow presenters here. Psalm chapter 34 verse uh, 7. I love the verse. Four verse 7. Mm -hmm. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them mm -hmm. that fear him, mm -hmm. and delivereth them. Exactly. You know, Brother Nathan, we were talking about uh, a, a book called Prayer for Ellen G. White. And there's a book of called Angels. Eh? Angels play a very big role, Elder Mumba. We are ever with the holy angels. Just like our opponents, the Satanists, our opponents, the Masons, our opponents, the Illuminati, those who worship the devil, those people have power, extremely great power, because they have angels with them. The same with us. For us, we don't need billions of demons to be our power. Only one angel. We just read the verse. One holy angel can tremble down a million demons or evil angels. We need to have faith that these angels are always with us. These people who are Satanists can see these demons. Yes, but for us it's faith. We we'll only see these angels after the silver trumpet does what? Blows. 
we will meet with them and we'll chat. They will tell us our experiences of this life. Thank you, Evangelist. Okay, the the book I read on the first part, I forgot in the page. So maybe you can go and search the faith I live by, page one zero seven. Yes, you will find where it is written the justification itself because here it says it's the complete pardon of sin. Yes. Again, we are going to go to uh, again the writings of Eden White, the prophet, the last prophet we have. Thoughts from the Mount of Blessings, page 114.1. Yes, where it says, but forgiveness has a broader meaning than men suppose. When God forgive, for, when, when God give the promise that he will abundantly pardon, he adds as if he, the meaning of that promise exceeded all that we could comprehend. My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither your way my ways, say the Lord. For as the heaven are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah 55, verse 7 to 9, we can find this written here. It continues, God is forgiveness, not merely a judicial act by which he sets us free from condemnation. It is not forgiveness for sin, but reclaiming from sin. Okay, so let me explain to you. When God forgives you, he, he, he says it's not judicial. So it's not that when God forgives you, he just says, okay, I've forgiven you, then you forget about. When he forgives you, again, he will claim you from that sin to take out from you to take out you from that sin. So what is sin here? Again, it continues. It is outflow of the deeming love that transforms the heart. David had the true conception of forgiveness. When he prayed, create in, create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a spirit the light spirit within me. This is Psalms 51 verse 10. And again he says, as far as the east is from the west, so far had he removed our transgressions. Yes. So Jesus is talking about forgiving us our sins. So viewers, if God pardon you or forgive you the sins. Don't forget that maybe he has just forgiven. He's claiming again you to take out from you. To take you from that place into another one. So that you are free from this bondage of sin. So that is what he, Ellen White is saying here. Because Ellen White we believe that he was inspired by God himself. So the, the writings of Ellen White, it is about God himself or Jesus himself. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Elder. Thank you. Wow, that was a clear one from the Elder. Yes. yes thank you. Faith of Jesus Christ. Faith. The children, children of Israel were removed from the... God saved them from the, from the Egyptians. How many were they? Two, two, two million. Two million somewhere there, yes. God saved them, we removed them from Egypt. Before they reached uh, the Jordan, uh, the Red Sea, the army of Pharaoh were coming behind them to come and kill them. They started panicking, losing their faith. And they started talking to uh, Moses. Low choir of the God that we say has brought us here to be killed by the, by the Egyptians. When they saw that, Moses told, uh, Moses told God, and God told Moses, tell them to go in front. 
Before he opened the sea, he had to first tell the university to have faith to take a step. They moved step by step towards the sea. Immediately when they stepped on the sea, with faith, you know, you're going, you're seeing a sea, but you're having faith that God is going to split it. And immediately when they stepped in the waters, God split the Red Sea. Faith of Jesus Christ. So, when you look at faith of Jesus Christ, why is our Lord Jesus Christ is in the most holy place? We said righteousness by faith, it is justification, and what is sanctification? So, I'll read in the book of uh, sanctification, the life of sanct uh, the, the sanctified life of, uh, that's the title of the book, of our prophet Ellen G. White. It's reads in page 10, paragraph 1. The Bible sanctification, the Bible sanctification, which is the word, the Bible, does not consist in strong emotion. Does not consist in strong emotion. Here, here is where many were led into error. They make feelings their criterion. Criterion. So what it means by criterion, it means they make feelings as their standard of judgment. So if we depend on uh, feelings, okay, I feel like this, this thing has to move, you make your reasoning and your judgment towards your feeling, that's dangerous sense of living God. That's why Hosea chapter 4 verse 6, I prepared straight for the lack of knowledge, that have rejected knowledge, I also reject you. It's all about knowledge, reasoning. So even sanctification, we have to move with reasoning and facts. Yes, let me continue. When they when they feel elected, elected or happy, they claim that they are sanctified. Happy feelings or the absence of joy is no evidence that a person is or is not sanctified. There is no such thing as instant, instantaneous sanctification. True sanctification is daily work, I repeat. True sanctification is daily work, continuing to continue as long as life shall last. Those who are battling in daily temptations, overcoming their own sinful tenderness, seeking for holiness of heart and life, make no boastful claims of holiness. They are hungering and thirsting for righteousness. Sin appears to them exceedingly sinful. God is sealing his children, the other part of righteousness, by faith. Sanctification is an everyday procedure of being holy. It all works with God, which is doing the most holy place. Justification is your title to heaven. Sanctification is your fitness in heaven let us not miss that so let us hope and pray to god earnestly every day to help us keep the law and have the faith of jesus christ thank you great words there by uh, evangelist uh, brother nathan i want to also elder mumba to bring in the element of prayer as we are going towards the end of our program prayer cannot be separated from faith because the whole essence, even to a little child or even to a person, brother Nathan, who is not a Christian, how do you explain that God answers our prayers, God hears our prayers? It's through faith. The basic element in Christendom or Christian life is faith. Prayer and faith. Now, when we talk about prayer and faith, I want to just give a little citation here from the Spirit of Prophecy, uh, from a book called Education. 257. Prayer and faith are closely allied and they need to be studied together. In the prayer of faith, there is a divine science, says Spirit of Prophecy. It is a science that everyone who would make his life work a success must understand. Christ says, What things soever ye desire when ye pray, believe that ye receive them and ye shall have them. In the book of Mark 11, verse 24, he makes it plain that our asking must be according to God's will. We must ask for the things that he has promised. And whatever 
we receive must be used in doing his will. The conditions met, the promise is unequivocal. So, that is a very serious citation, Education 257.7. We need to have faith. You know, people pray. People pray and prayers are never answered. Eh? That is why that book, Brother Nathan, that you finished reading called Prayer is very important. Prayer should be serious. Elder hey, Mumba, you have seen people even in our churches who stand and is having a mic there, is praying, pointing and fingers and... Well, well we're not dealing with prayer today, but uh, one of these Bible studies, we have to deal with prayer. I think people in the audience agree. Prayer is an, a serious element. Yes, prayer is a topic. I think when we finish Elder Mumba, when we finish the four elements which compose present truth, we should tackle prayer. I'm, I'm, su I'm suggesting that. You will buy my side. You second it. Do you, sec do you second it, Brother Nathan? We need to tackle prayer. So prayer is very important. It's a very, very important topic. So when we finish these elements, let's deal with prayer. You cannot separate what we are dealing with today, faith, from prayer. The whole essence of us Christians is based on faith. And prayer is the key. So I'm going to also go to what Brother Nathan talked about before I hand over the mic. We are talking about the faith of Jesus Christ. The faith of Jesus Christ is coping Jesus' behavior while he still lived on this earth. How was his behavior? Jesus obeyed the Ten Commandments of God. The Ten Commandments of God. That is the faith of Jesus. Did Jesus break any of the Ten Commandments? No. He actually said, I have come to not to break any of these. Eh? You know, he warned us. Anyone who removes any small law is guilty. Now, when we go to the book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, verse 20, the people in the audience can also help in that one. There are two verses there that I want. Ezekiel is a very, very sensitive uh, book for us people in the present truth and uh, those of us who are preaching the third angel's message. Ezekiel chapter 20, verse 20. It's talking about a specific commandment. My brother, you are there. A specific commandment that is very, very important. Elder Mumba, today at church, remember, I mentioned this. I said in the three books uh, of Ellen White, there is a book called Present Truth. No, no, early writings and testimonies. She actually was taken to heaven in vision. And she saw the two tablets of the commandments. She said they were shining. There were two halves. Remember, the first half is love your God with all your heart and your mind and your soul. Those are the first four commandments. Then from number five, children obey your parents. Number six, thou shalt not kill. Number seven, adultery. All the way to number ten, love your neighbor the way you love yourself. She saw the, the two sections. Now, the first section was shining more than the second one because it was love your God. The first four commandments. Then on, on those four commandments, she saw one particular one which was shining more than all the others. It was the Sabbath commandment. She saw that. Why? Then she explains in the book Early Writings to say this commandment is shining more than the others because it's the one that is in Revelation 14, verse 9 and 10. It's the third angel's message. It is the one that will end this world. It's the final drama. It's about the Sabbath. The devil has to just choose one of the Ten Commandments. When you break it, you fail the test of judgment of God. You're in the lake of fire. He has chosen the fourth commandment. That is the 666, the National Sunday Law. We've been talking about that. It's coming. So basically, Ezekiel 20 verse 20, who has found it in the audience? Okay, okay. I am the Lord your God, walk in my statutes and keep my judgments and do them and hallow my son. Mm -hmm. And they shall be a sign between me and you. Mm -hmm that you may know that I am the Lord your God. Mm. Can you see? And then the devil chooses the fourth commandment where God shows us that he is our God. That verse is telling you why we should observe the Sabbath so that we can remember in our brains that we have a God, we have a creator. It's different from thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not do these other things. The Sabbath commandment is the apple of God's eye. Let us also read Ezekiel 20, verse 12, the last verse there. Moreover, mm -hmm. also, I gave them my servants mm -hmm. to be a sign between me mm -hmm. and them, mm -hmm. 
that they may know that I am the Lord that sanctify them. Faith of Jesus Christ, keeping the commandments, all the ten. That is why the Seventh day Adventist Church is the remnant what? Church. Because we are keeping all the how many? Nine? We are keeping ten. We are keeping ten commandments. We cannot remove one. And now at where we are, since we know, you know, we don't have to guess Odamumba to say we are at the end of the world. We are seeing these things. He said in Matthew 24 and 25, when you see these things, know that the end has what? Has come. It has come. So we are the end of the world, and the end of the world, the final drama is to break one of the Ten Commandments, which is the one we're just from reading, the Fourth Commandment. I think we can wind up. Right. Okay, before we wind up, I just want to read one citation or two. Yeah, because he, Jesus Christ, he gave up himself a ransom for us because he had faith in God the Father. Yes. So why Jesus Christ did that? Because God loves each one of us. So we are going to read again Education, page 124. This is Ellen White's writings. It says, And even greater is the power of the Bible in the development of the spiritual nature. Man created for fellowship with God can only in such fellowship God as real life and development created to find in God in God's highest joy. He can find in nothing else that which can quiet the craving of the heart, can satisfy the hunger and the thirst of the soul. Yes. So the most important why Jesus Christ was came here to save us is he want God himself want this fellowship. Fellowship is very, very important. God wants to fellowship with him. So that's why he wants to clean us from all sins so that we are perfect in his presence. Again, I can continue in this in another book called Desire of Ages, page 21.1, where it says, The angels of glory find their joy in giving, giving love and tirelessly watch care to souls that are fallen and unholy. Heavens being who the hearts of men, they bring to this dark world light from courts above. By gentle and patient ministry, they move upon the human spirit to bring the lost into the fellowship with Christ, which is even closer than they know, they know pardon, closer than they themselves can know. This is the angel. Angels is bringing those lost people and those who are unholy to be cleansed so that they can have fellowship with God himself. Here it says again, let me repeat it. The angels of glory find their joy in giving, giving love and tireless watch care to soul that are fallen and unholy. Heaven is being who the hearts of men, they bring to this dark world light, these are angels, from the courts above. Yes. So when they are come from heaven, coming here, they are bringing this light. By gentle and patient ministry, they move upon the human spirit to bring the lost into the fellowship with Christ, which is even closer than they themselves can know. Can you imagine how important we are in the sight of God himself? Even the angels himself, themselves. Yes, they can't even know how this closeness which Jesus Christ or God himself want us to be. Yes. So, brothers and sisters, let's come to God. Let's come to Jesus. 
He pardoned us our sins from the cross of Calvary. What is remaining is us now to give us ourselves to Him, to follow His steps so that God can have fellowship with us. That is the most important God wants now. Thank you so much. I had mentioned before, Brother Nathan, you get it. I had mentioned the importance of angels, Elder Mumba. There is a book called Angels of Ellen White. Let's find time to read it. It's all about faith. Our friends, the Satanists, the others on the other camp, they see they are angels. But us, we can't see our angels. The Spirit of Prophecy says we are going to see them at an appointed time. And we'll be chatting. They'll be telling us a lot of stories. Now, imagine you are seated with your angels. What, are, what will they be telling you? The, a time is coming when we'll sit with our angels. So, Brother Nathan, the moment you start, you read that book called Angels, your life will change. You start walking the way Enoch walked. Because you will know that when you are just about to do a certain thing, your angels... Would you want your angels to be doing that? So we have angels. Yoda Mumba just read. These angels actually in, in the book, present, is it early writings? They present God in what? Cards, yes. They go to heaven, there are angels there at the entrance. So your angels present cards called golden cards, then they enter. They, these angels do not stay here on earth. They stay in heaven. They just come to work. They come to work, they are interested in our affairs. Spirit of prophecy, when you read the spirit of prophecy, it explains further in those things. Thank you. Yes, angels. Like the elders have said, angels are with us, sense of living God. As you check, we're the last church, the church of Laodicean. Church of Laodicean is simply the church living in the period of judgment. And we are the only church who's believing, which is living in in the period of judgment and which believes in the judgment which is taking place investigative judgment which started in 1844 shifting at the passing of the sunday law so whilst we're living in the period of judgment sense of living god inspiration says that you know before probation closes you know we have a time period from here to here and before probation closes then the Sunday law has to come in between. And she says that, you know, the Sunday law will be the testing either for our, for, our, for, our, for our lives, either for righteousness in heaven or eternal death in, he in the lake of fire. So, where is God is to in the most holy place, interceding for our sins, let us take these warnings seriously. There was a man before the destruction of Jerusalem, went around, around the cities preaching for 70 years. Seven, 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 seven years preaching. And no one listened to his call. But when the destruction came, it all caught those who, are not, who didn't hack into the message unaware. It all applies to us, even us. Today we are speaking about the Sunday law which is coming. 2025 plus or minus we are sharing this news with you i don't know to some of you it can be a blessing to some of you it can be a nuisance to some of you that these guys are fanatics they're just talking but we are not sense of the god if if there's anywhere where you have seen that okay we're not producing we're not speaking the truth we are facts and the spirit of prophecy god says my people are distressed for lack of knowledge. We have to seek the knowledge which is the way. It's telling us that, which is prophecy. We are acquiring the knowledge because this is our profession. To share to the entire world. The three angels message, it will be a benefit to each and every individual to know that, okay, now my internal destiny is going to be decided on the image of the beast. Not knowing, not knowing that before probation closes, no, but by the image of the beast. Let's play our part. Like, you know, the elder said about the Ten Commandments. If love, you, love God with all your heart, soul, my body, and mind, and so on. But the other one also applies, love your neighbor as you love yourself. It's really unfair, you know, every time to see it. 
listening no one can share to you the stranger's message because of fear to be killed but God says love your neighbor as you love yourself if I want to make it to heaven also I want my fellow brother also to make it to heaven let us play our part for us to receive our rewards may God bless you thank you I think we'll end it here Odamumba unless there's something burning or you can keep it for next week okay thank you brother Nathan uh, ladies and gentlemen let us study let us read Hosea 4 verse what? 6 my people are destroyed for the lack of what? knowledge and because they have rejected knowledge I God will also do what? reject them so we never knew these things some of us have grown up in the SDA home more than 40 years but because of knowledge reading spirit of prophecy books you know this is syndrome brother nathan which i had for more than 40 years i hated spirit of prophecy i used to say just the bible is enough and i know i've left many people behind in the sda who still have that language i hated ellen white the bible is enough but you know the funny thing with the bible is that all the pentecostals have read the same bible which we read you know, even when I remember, you not forget that Pentecostals, in my former life, I would open the Bible, read maybe just one verse, two verses, then I cheat myself to say I've read. People who managed to get it were those who loved. You remember the school of the prophets? We need to love the prophet. We need to love Ellen White. The school of the prophet was first introduced by Prophet Samuel. Okay? Prophet Samuel introduced it David was in that school. That is why out of Jesse's sons, the cowboy who was neglected, who was in the school of the prophets introduced by Samuel, was the chosen king. He loved the prophecy, spirit of prophecy. Even his son Solomon was in the school of Samuel, the prophets. You read the chapters in Ellen White, the school of the prophets. Please go and read. First was introduced by Samuel. And because of loving prophecy, it makes it easier for us to study the Bible. Ellen White has been proved to be, she said, prove me. I think I'll bring that citation. If I'm a false prophet, according to Isaiah 8 verse 20, we have a yardstick to test these prophets. Do they keep the law? And do they speak according to the word? She does. Every time we are quoting, even today we quoted, she was writing verses. She speaks according to the word. The prophecy, spirit of prophecy will help us read and enjoy the Bible. There are certain verses which are hidden in the Bible. The whole Bible is important. Joel, Hosea, those prophets, we throw them away, yeah? But Ellen White will point you to those guys and will make it understandable to you. So let us read. So my, view, my people there, our people there, Eudamumba, we are encouraging them to be readers. My people will perish for the lack of what? Knowledge. We need to read the spirit of prophecy books. These books, Ellen White's books. These books now, they're even on the internet. Yes. So, you heard the, the, the pastor who came from America today in church? The director for AW, Ara, uh, World Adventist World Radio. He was saying we need to do what? To preach using social media because almost every human being now has a phone. So, we have these books of Ellen G. White on the phones. Let us read. Then we'll have knowledge, and she will take us to the Bible. We'll understand the Bible further. I think let us end it from here. Uh, we usually pray at the end. This thing where, by the way, Damumba, yes. there is that prayer book for Ellen White. She condemns. That's why I'm saying we have to bring the next topic on prayer. People who pray standing up. Eh? Do you remember? She even said, there is a young man who I told to come down from the pulpit because he almost started praying standing. Prayer is angels hide their faces when they are praying to God. Ellen White says, what more you, the sinful ones? We need to learn to kneel down and pray. Because God is not just reciting verses. We have to picture him. We are worshiping a very holy God. That is the faith. We need to know that the one we are worshiping is not a dog. Is very holy whereby angels bow and hide their faces. So how do we stand before the main, main service and pray and point as if you are talking to your friends in the market and holding the other mic this side? We need to reverence God. We need to put God where he belongs. We worship a living God who is very powerful. Let us pray. Let 
us pray. Our Father who is in heaven, the creator of the heavens, the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, hallowed be thy name. Let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Father, we thank you for using us as your vessels at this time to speak to your people. It also has been a lesson to us who you have used at this time, Father. Father, for it is written in 1 John chapter 1, verse 9, If you confess our sins, it's faithful and just to forgive our sins and cleanse us from our unrighteousness. Father, you know our weaknesses and you know our strength. Forgive us where we have erred, the words which have said, and the thoughts which you have thought, and the ways which we have passed through and done against you, Father. Forgive us, Lord. Remove us, Father, from every filthy thing on us which is not pleasant to you, and make us righteous, and sanctify us whilst you are in the most holy place with your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who is our King. For it is written in Matthew 7, 7, Ask can be given to you, seek can you find, no can it open unto you. Father, I ask you to remove self in us completely. Please, Lord, remove self in us and replace it with Jesus Christ. Just like Paul said, it's not I who live it, but it's Jesus Christ in me. Let it be so with us, Father, whilst you are sealing us in these last days. Make us meek and righteous. Let us have, help us to have long suffering. Make us perfect according to your character, Father, and your will. Let your will be done, Lord, not mine. Thank you for answering my prayer. Amen. Wow, thank you, thank you, my dear brothers and sisters out there. Let us meet next week again as we continue on the last phase now of faith of Jesus. What? Christ. Thank you to the audience also who joined us today. May God bless us. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life when the clouds unfold their wings of strife? When the strong tides lift and the cables strain, will your anchor drift or firm remain? We have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll fastened to the rock which cannot move grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love it is safely moored will the storm withstand for tis well secured by the Savior hand and the cables pass from his heart to mine can defy the blast through strength divine we have an anchor that keeps the soul steadfast and sure while the billows roll fastened to the rock which cannot move Grounded firm and deep in the Savior's love. When our eyes behold through the gathering night the city of gold, our harbor bright, we shall anchor fast by the heavenly shore with the storms all past forever. the soul set fast and sure while the billows roll fastened to the rock which cannot move grounded firm and deep in the same